Good morning. My name is Dr. Abiola Olushegun, a herbal medicine practitioner in MB Holistic Care. What we are actually going to discuss today is benefits of calcium in the body and how, how we lose calcium, how calcium is related, as in how the deficiency of calcium is related to cancer formation, heart attack, and stroke. We're going to discuss everything in this lecture today. And before I start, I want to tell you that if you, if, as we are going on in the lecture, if you have anything to add or you want have a question to ask us, you can message us directly. And there's a number there where you can contact and speak to a doctor. Now, calcium. Calcium is one of the most important mineral in human body functions. It is one of the most important. And we often use it for bone-related issues. Issues, but actually, calcium have more functions than just bone health. It doesn't work for only the bone health. It has so many functions, and one important function calcium have is intracellular communication. It is a major mineral that helps cells to communicate with each other. So that is why calcium is very, very important. It is not just for bone because so many people believe that when when they mention calcium, it's just to maintain their bone health. No. We have told us that one major function of calcium is that it has intracellular communication because it allows cells to communicate with each other. And there is a condition that, is, that, is, that happens when someone is deficient in calcium. That is hypocalcemia because it is not good to be deficient in calcium. Likewise, it is not good for calcium to be too high in the body. And when you have hypocalcemia, uh, that's when the body have low levels of calcium. And this can lead to dental changes. It can lead to cataracts. It can lead to alterations in the brain. It can lead to, it can lead to osteoporosis. That's, osteoporosis causes the bone to become brittle. So it is not good for calcium to be deficient in the body. And the, the body will begin to increase intracellular calcium. Normally, outside the cell, we have... 10,000 times calcium or so to supply the cells because there shouldn't be excess calcium in the cells. And when there is too much of calcium in the cells, when that happens, it, it causes a condition that is known as intracellular hypercalcinosis. Intracellular hypercalcinosis. That occurs when you have too much of calcium in the cells. And this occurs when there is no enough calcium outside the cells but you have much of it inside the cells. When you, when you don't have calcium outside the cells, you don't have much outside the cells, but you have much of it inside the cells. And this leads to hardening of the arteries, which can lead to hypertension. That's, that was why we said we are going to discuss how calcium, as the relationship between calcium and hypertension, between calcium and heart attack, between calcium and cancer formation. So when you have intracellular hypercalcinosis, hypercalcinosis, it results in hardening of the arteries, and that can lead to hypertension. And the reason simply is that there is going to be immobilization of calcium usage in the body. So there will be no good regulations of calcium again. And they just they will just get stuck in the cells. And we know cells make up tissues, organs like heart and arteries. So they block calcium from going inside the cells because there is excess inside and you don't have much outside. So hypertension as a result of excess calcium in cells is why our orthodox doctors do recommend calcium channel blockers drugs. That is why they recommend it. So, either those drugs really is a solution, that one is topic for another day. But calcium deficiency can also cause diabetes because calcium has a function with how insulin binds with cell re um, receptors. So, when there's calcium deficiency, it leads to diabetes. It's a, a deficiency also has a link to cancer formation. One thing that calcium does, calcium does is a control of reproduction of cellular growth. And in cancer, 
we have cells refusing to die that carries on immortality and keep growing. They refuse to die. So there is a, there is a medical term known as apoptosis. That's natural cell death. And enough adequate calcium has a role in that. So in deficiency with other factors, cancer can easily set in. It can also occur when there is excess calcium in cells, that is hypercarcinosis. And that can cause arthritis too. It can cause tumors. It can cause inflammation. It can cause kidney stones. It can cause tendonitis and so on. And even stroke due to adding of the arteries. So all the above conditions that we have mentioned are related to calcium in a very serious way. But what causes that? When there is too much calcium in cells and there is no or there is deficiency outside the cells, calcium does not move in our circulatory system on its own. And it is, it is being used by the cells. Other vitamins help to move calcium or, or helps us to transport it to cells before our cells can make use of it. And without those vitamins, calcium will only get stuck. That is why, that is why, we, that is why it's, it's linked to cancer formation, hypertension, atherosclerosis, stroke, arthritis, and so on. Because it needs those calcium to be able to, we need those calcium to be, for, um, calcium to be able to, to be transported into the cells before our cells can make use of them. And when we lack those, those vitamins, then calcium will only get stopped. That is when it leads to, that's when it, is, it leads to cancer formation, atherosclerosis, heart attack, and all that. And number one of those vitamins is vitamin D3. Vitamin D3. We know that vitamin D3 can be gotten from sunlight. And low level, low, low, le low level of this vitamin D3 can cause calcium to get stuck in cells because it is not transported. And cells we hold on to the ones they have. Well, what are the things that causes low vitamin D? Apart from not being exposed to early morning sun, cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone that is released into our body when we, when we go through too much stress. And this hormone can keep your vitamin D level low. And this can cause hypercarcinosis. Because calcium will not be transported into the cells. It will get stuck. And another cause for low vitamin D is low bile. Bile is a digestive fluid produced by the liver. And it is stored in the gallbladder. So when there is low vitamin D, as, um, I mean, when, when uh, vitamin D, when it has low bile, that is from your gallbladder, when there is low bile in your gallbladder, it, there will be deficiency in vitamin D3. So when we say stress can cause hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, cancer, and so on, that is one of the chains because there is low bile in the gallbladder. And vitamin D help arteries to be more elastic. It helps our arteries to be more elastic and it is very good in osteoporosis. And there's another one, vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is another important vitamin that helps calcium distribution. It takes calcium from cells and push them into the bones. So, Bile helps in fat metabolism. It absorbs fats, and vitamin D is fat soluble. It is a fat soluble vitamin. So when someone has gallbladder issue or liver problem, and there is not enough bile, fat solubles like vitamin D will not be absorbed. So so low vitamin K two can cause hypercarcinosis. Vitamin K two is also a fat soluble vitamin. And deficiency in it can affect calcium distribution too. But when people take omega-3, vitamin D, vitamin K, magnesium, looking closely at the conditions they are recommended for, 
we will see that most of them are often for conditions leading to hypercarcinosis. I mean, leading from hypercarcinosis. And that's why, in most chronic cases, magnesium is one of the most important supplements in most chronic cases. Then, another cause for hypercarcinosis is when we have low omega-3 and low magnesium level. I've told us that calcium is not just for bones. It has many other functions in our body. So, when there is low omega-3 and low magnesium level, this will also cause hypercalcinosis. It will not make calcium to be distributed in our body. They will get stopped. So, and you know, we lose, the, we lose calcium every day. We lose calcium through our skin, through our nails, through our hair, through our sweat, through our urine and feces. We lose calcium. And our, body, our bodies cannot produce calcium on its own. So that is why it is important to get enough calcium from the food we eat. And when we don't get the calcium our body needs, it is taken from our bones. And you know, that can affect the bones. And... This is fine once in a while, but if it happens too often, it makes our bones to get weak and it makes it easier to break. So, please, from our food, you know, we get vitamin D through sunlight and make sure we, we should make sure we eat foods that is rich in vitamin K and uh, vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 so that we can have calcium since we lose calcium every day. And, that's, that will be the end of the lecture today. So I've told us that if we have any question or contribution, we can message us directly. And if you want to speak with a doctor, maybe you have any ailment or you have any question concerning what we have discussed today or what, what we have been discussing, you can contact us on 0810460-7130 or 0902872. 7107 and you can also follow us on our other social media platform on instagram mb holistic underscore care on um facebook at mbk you can you can also call our, our number that we have mentioned and if you want to visit our clinic it is situated at number 51 abiodun street miragba dojai near abulegba so this is where we are going to end the lecture today. And I will implore us to like and share the lecture so that those that are not joining us now can actually benefit from it also. And tomorrow we'll discuss on how to recover from mental breakdown. And bye for now. See us tomorrow.